I'm Dean Angelides and I'm uh, with Esri where I'm a corporate director and I have responsibilities for our international business as well as uh, for our major alliances and partnerships. GIS trends really are following some other major industry trends and uh, part of these are involve actually uh, sensors and measurement and networks. Another is uh, really cloud and the emergence of cloud as a, as a viable and acceptable computing platform. And the third trend really uh, that is important to us is actually what Gartner has called the consumerization of IT. In other words, uh, consumer-like uh, user experiences that are need to move into the workplace. I mean this is really about uh, a user experience which is lightweight, fast, easy to use, intuitive, and uh, just helps focus on the work that needs to be done. So for instance, uh, rather than having a big heavy uh, you know, text-based application and uh, the traditional GIS interface with a table of contents and lots of layers that are on. Really, it's just about focusing uh, the information that a user wants to get a hold of and just having it available with three clicks, essentially. Uh, the experience that people are used to using with their smartphones, essentially, or on their web browsers and, of course, uh, similar types of experiences even on the desktop. There are a number of things that, that we're doing with, with, our, with our technology and our products. Um, so definitely we are simplifying um, all of the experience, but it's really about getting, uh, in fact, we are uh, just released a, a new desktop app which is fully integrated with our uh, web GIS platform uh, made to interact in a, in a very smooth way with a streamlined uh, user interface that's far more intuitive, uh, fewer clicks to get to action. So even on the desktop, we're simplifying grammatically. That doesn't mean that we have simplified the work that you can do, just the way that users interact. The other thing is that um, we actually have provided applications that are for the web and also app the same types of applications that will run on devices. In fact, we have something called the Web App Builder that requires no programming whatsoever. Um, I can explain a little bit more about that and uh, how that works together with sort of this new pattern that we call Web GIS. Uh, even that, that pattern of web GIS is about simplifying and streamlining the way we actually deliver real information products. Not having somebody have to wade through layers and layers of information in sort of a, a complex and tedious way. It just provides the information that's needed right up front very easily within a portal type environment accessible by any device anywhere at any time. We're really responding uh, essentially to the trends and uh, with uh, in terms of this sensors and networks really we have some initiatives on development where GIS is really becoming real time as well as 3D. So we have very focused initiatives to develop our platform in that way. This means that feeds of all types, whether it's uh, social media or feeds from sensor networks or feeds from automated, automated vehicle uh, tracking uh, or uh, people tracking indoors, all those types of things, through an extension that we, we call the GeoEvent extension. It's actually specifically designed to input high uh, performance capturing of these things and then being able to do on-the-fly processing and then alerting or kicking off other processes that create this real-time environment, both viewing as well as analytic. Of course, 3D uh, is uh, growing in popularity everywhere. Uh, I just came from uh, uh, two very vertical cities, Hong Kong and Singapore, and there uh, it's, it's all about 3D. 
So uh, we have some great technology uh, that dramatically simplifies the way that people can work with 3D and this is not just about visualization where you can fly through and you know create not only simple visualizations but it's also about uh, the analytics and it's about the data structures and it's about uh, creating a true 3D environment rich 3D environment for data management for analytics as well as high performance viewing visualization. There's some other trends that are there also let's say this cloud and uh, we have of course um, this web GIS pattern that really is designed to work in cloud environments. Uh, both our server technology especially um, has advanced substantially so uh, you can run it actually on private clouds or behind the firewall you can put it up into like the Amazon cloud, run it there very quickly, easy to deploy, or actually our SaaS offering ArcGIS Online, so you need no software at all. It's a simple uh, process to get up and running very quickly. I would say the, the other uh, trend, which I mentioned just a little bit ago, is really about uh, apps, <laughs> lots of apps, uh, and being able to actually create apps with no programming. Um, so this means that um, you can actually create what we call a web map. It's actually one of the little secrets in a sense of uh, this web GIS pattern. Um, it actually allows the orchestration of services, whether the services are map services or uh, modeling and analytic services or streaming services from devices and tracking services, and bring them all together, mash them up into a single information product, essentially. And then being able to take that and deliver it on any device, anywhere, anytime. And that, this actually happens uh, with no programming, where you can drop this into an application template. And that template is built to be responsive, so you can actually run it uh, in a web browser, on a desktop, or even a tablet device or smartphone. Apps are everywhere. I know it's, that's the way that I work now. I used to have maybe one or two systems that I would work with on a daily basis, and now I use dozens of apps every day. Uh, and our user community obviously wants to have the same experience. So um, what, what we have are really three different ways of sort of uh, addressing this app revolution that is, uh, is happening all around us. The first is that we actually have some uh, web app builder, as we call it. Uh, you actually can uh, create applications. There are built-in widgets for that. And it takes no programming at all to actually build something that uh, traditionally would have taken weeks or even months to build. Uh, the second thing is um, actually requiring little or no application development after you have authored one of these web maps. You just simply drag and drop it into a web template and create uh, a web application just like that and then be able to publish it to all types of people in your organization, share it easily throughout your organization. Uh, we also have a very rich set of APIs um, which of course um, these uh, ready-to-use apps, not necessarily the only way that you can get work done, but um, developers um, will want to get a hold of these and they'll develop really a whole generation of new and creative and innovative uh, applications that incorporate uh, GIS. One final thing that actually uh, I should have mentioned first is that there's actually a set of apps that require no programming, only configuration. Um, so these are things like for collecting data. Uh, it's the collector app. It just You just do some simple configuration and you can go out and use within minutes. Uh, also uh, business apps that connect into um, 
popular business environments like uh, Excel, for instance, and uh, IBM Cognos and Microsoft SharePoint and Dynamics and like that. Yeah, we have a number of uh, uh, important alliances. SAP is definitely one of those. Uh, as we've we've had a strong relationship with them for quite some time, actually a number of years, and uh, we've always had very strong uh, enterprise integration with them. Uh, more recently, actually, we're looking at uh, a different type of partnership. This is around, uh, let's say, spatializing HANA. Um, you know, taking some of our technology and embedding it both within the, the HANA database and the Lumira business intelligence. I mean, some of this stuff is, is evolving right now, but uh, we think that the um, relationship of our platform along with SAP brings amazing value um, to, uh, to our customers. Actually, the process took a couple of years, but uh, we've recently realigned a lot of the resources inside of Esri to create uh, a business team that actually is specifically focused into these vertical areas, industry areas. Um, so the idea here is that we have um, actually teams that understand the business problems of these specific industries and the business drivers and the specific problems that uh, need to be solved and actually how GIS supports those directly. Um, so that actually is, is important for us. The second thing is that not only are we uh, looking at sort of this solution space, if you will, uh, but we also have uh, professional services teams that are aligned to provide packaged and focused services into those to help um, our, our customers be successful within industries very quickly. Also training and workforce development as being part of that um, where we, we can have more industry specific content in our in our uh, training and uh, workshops and so on that help people be productive very quickly spatial analysis is one of the one of the key things about GIS and, and about Esri's approach to GIS that really brings tremendous value into the marketplace uh, now what we want to do is just make it easy for people to map and analyze their business data. Um, so that's really the idea behind location analytics. Uh, traditionally, uh, our technology has really sort of been an application, standalone application, sort of at the departmental level. And uh, now that we've evolved uh, with this web GIS platform, in particular actually becomes a business platform, an enterprise business platform that sits alongside uh, ERPs and business intelligence systems and CRMs and so on. So we're actually looking at location analytics in a much broader way. So first of all, um, we have some products today that allow you to geo-enable uh, business systems, as I mentioned before. Um, but more importantly, what we're seeing is that the, the platform, in a sense, becomes the system of record, if you will, for all the location content and context of the resources of a business. So in a sense, location analytics <laughs> starts to go everywhere throughout the, throughout the enterprise using this location platform idea. The real uh, relationship is about, um, in a sense, augmenting what's already going on within our customer organizations. Uh, Google, of course, is known to have a very, very strong visualization platform, uh, Google Earth Enterprise and the uh, Google Maps Engine are two technologies that um, have been used within very large enterprises. Uh, as it turns out, Google now is deciding that they want to spend um, their efforts into uh, things that scale to the billions. They've always been quite good at that. 
And so uh, what we're doing is actually having an offering for these enterprise customers where they need on-premises software. And we're actually going to be replacing some of that on-premises technology as Google moves uh, more into the, the cloud and the consumer space. What this actually means is that our latest technology actually is also an amazing visualization platform. I mentioned earlier about this ArcGIS Pro app. Uh, ArcGIS Pro has integrated 2D, 3D, works with on the web, can uh, actually do amazing visualization in 3D, create these globes, similar type of thing, publish those, and then also make that same content available um, not just on the desktop, but actually on any device. And so those, those things are going to be evolving over the next few months here. Uh, it's actually very exciting, uh, in a sense, to, to have this relationship. They, yes, they will have this free client. And so uh, the architecture is that uh, today there are these Google servers that serve into the Google client. What is going to happen is that ArcGIS server uh, will actually serve to Google clients, to Esri clients, and also to other, through the APIs, to other open clients as well. Most of the, the customers, our joint customers that we're working with now, and uh, is they're working with their own data. That's sort of the main reason why they have the Google servers um, to sort of power that visualization. Um, so, of course, uh, we will be able to uh, take that same content and serve it up through ArcGIS server. Um, if you're talking about sort of the consumer content, um, those, those are still accessible now through the Google APIs and they will continue to, to expand and provide, uh, let's say, access to that content through the, through the Google APIs.